State fails. We're here. I'm with Brian Monarch at his house. We're back. Every time we come, listen, let's just explain what's, this is the deal, okay? Brian has this state-of-the-art studio. It's so dope. Uh, and he has this Rodecaster Pro, which Donnell just bought too, Donnell Rawlings, who I'm doing a podcast with as well. And the thing is dope. Should I turn the lights on? Should we have more lighting? I mean, it's your call. I think we look pretty good and I'm sick. But anyway, guys, there's, we're getting more lighting now. We're about to glow up. Uh... The Rodecaster Pro, shout out to Rode. If you want to send me one for free for my house, I would love that. It's really great. It's just that every time we come to do the podcast, Rode has come out with some update. Look, guys, how much like younger looking I just got on that side where the light's on. Perfect. Um, anyway, Rode keeps coming out with updates. And so every time they update it, it changes how you use it. So every time we come here, basically... We go through the process of like trying to figure out the new changes and it's just poor Brian is the tech guy. Like I have no idea how to do anything anyway. I just show up and, and glow up. <laughs> Does it matter which headset is on which side? I don't think it matters. I think you should put the cord on the side closest to the cord this, plug-in this thing. This feels right. So here, anyway, we're here. We're obviously, this is what's great. Last night I had uh, this girl named Rachel Mullins come over to my house and do a podcast who you met before. It's Stephen Kramer Glickman's girlfriend. She did that live one with us that, like, the audio got messed up at the Ice House. Did you guys get it on? Uh, as in, did we get it on, like, sexually? No, we didn't. Mm. Uh, but <laughs> but she came over. She looked at my setup, and I said, uh, I said, I don't have headphones for you, but I'll just watch to make sure that you're not, like, spiking or whatever. And she goes, well, are you recording in 16-bit or 24-bit? And I was like, what the hell does that mean? I have no idea. Do you know what we're recording in? We're doing 42-bit in this oh, bitch. Oh, shit. Maybe that's... Well, and then I was like, I don't know what that means. She goes, how can you not know that by now? How long have you been doing this? And I felt so stupid. And I was like, uh, well, I... You're never... the talent. You're not the engineer. That's how you didn't know. I what mean, is that, a compass? Yeah, it's a compass. Isn't this cool? Where'd you get it? Actually, when I went to... I went to New York City and I stayed with... Uh, I stayed with Adam Duritz and his girlfriend for Thanksgiving. And me and her went to this like flea market art thing and and i bought this the chain broke so i had to put it on a different chain but it's pretty cool right yeah how much was that compass? actually works it was only like 25 bucks which way is north uh right now always <laughs> <laughs> i know what you mean but it's just it keeps spinning okay here we go north is but wait how does it work does it point it north I are you sure it works yeah but i don't i forget how a compass works north is when it's pointing, okay, wait. Keep I know, turning it until it's at until end. It, <laughs> guys, guys, listen. It keeps spinning around and around. Here we go. Wait, wait, wait. I'm not sure if it works. I'm gonna give it to you, and you figure it out. Well, <laughs> hold on. Hold this on. is what happens when you buy a compass at a flea market with a chain that breaks the next day. Oh, shit, and I have on headphones. You know what? We might have to figure this out later. Look, I can tell you which way north is without even using a compass. All right, then tell me. Do you know if then I'm... why do you have one? Well, I, if it's cute. <laughs> I mean, do you... It's like people that wear watches. Do you wear a watch? Hell no. Yeah, exactly, because if you did, it would just be decorated. Oh, here we go. Wait. It's really... Okay, north is basically like that away. Hmm. Almost. That way. Okay. I figured it out. It's just you have to turn it real slowly. Anyway, guys, so that we're... doesn't sound right. <laughs> no, it is right. I... Isn't Ventura Boulevard that way? That would definitely be south of no, Ventura. No, that's... Well, is the red end... Uh, okay, yeah, you so... you go downstairs, you go out the door, you make a right, and then... Yeah, that's south that way. Oh, well then... Well then... Okay, so then the red side is not... I thought the red end is supposed to point at north. I guess the red end points at south. I think there's a good chance we're going to start the podcast right now. No, we're not. We're putting all this out there. <laughs> this is all... By the way, guys, this podcast... So, officially, there is not technically a sponsor this week for the podcast. However, uh, I was just contacted by Blue Chew... Have you ever tried Blue Chew? No, but I have a good uh, sponsor that we can use if, if, uh, if you we, don't have one. If we want to go in the dick pill route, you mean? No, we're, we're, let's make it by Slee Stacks. <laughs> Today's was... episode is brought to you by Slee Stacks. They're green. They're scaly. They're scary. Don't run into them in a cave. Slee Stacks. Are those from Star Wars? <laughs> <laughs> I really don't know. Are they? They are from Land of the Lost. Oh, oh, all right. I only know Land Before Time. You don't know Land of the Lost? I don't, actually. Marshall, Will, and Holly. 
on a routine expedition. No. That the greatest earthquake ever known. Is this a movie or a TV show? It's I a really TV don't know. show that they turned into it. a movie. Oh. High on the rapids, it struck their tiny raft. Oh. I want to look it up. Oh, I'll look. I'll it's put that down. Land of the Lost. I don't know it. Below. Huh. All right. Well, uh, besides Land of the Lost and Slee Stacks. Sorry, I have to do the chorus. To the land okay. <laughs> of the lost. Okay, go ahead. Oh, okay. Uh, great job, by the way. Thank well you. done. Um, but Blue Chew. It's apparently it's a you know it's for people that want to be you know stronger and last longer in the sack for men. So it's, it's like, like a blue a, pill, but you chew it. It's like a blue pill that you can get without I think without a prescription. I should probably know more about it. All I know is that uh, they contacted me about wanting to work together, and so they're going to give me a link that I can use in my Instagram bio. If you want to buy it at a discount, you'll be able to get it through my Instagram bio. I'm getting the link tonight, so. Uh, and let me know how you like it. I haven't tried it. I always like to not vouch for something till I try it, but I don't have a penis. Although I'm curious what it would do for a woman. Yeah, maybe it'll make your clit harder. That's <laughs> That could happen. Now you're going to get more hard dicks out there than you did before. Oh, you're Lord. creating things. Good That's for great. me. Yeah. I wonder if anyone has tried Blue, Blue Chew? That could if you get me a sample, us. I've never tried a dick pill in my life. Um, All right. That's the truth. Okay. If you give me dick chew, blue chew. Dick chew. Blue, <laughs> it's if you blue give me chew. blue chew, yeah. dick chew, whatever the fuck it's called, I will chew it and I'll I, let you know what happens. I think it actually might be a pill, but either way. They shouldn't you know, call it a I should probably, blue chew. I should probably then. know more about Well, that's the thing. Until I know how it is, I need to know from the people. But guys, if you want blue chew, you know, the link will be in my bio tonight. Uh there is three texts when you're ready. I just want you to know that we have three texts on call for you when you are set to go. Oh, all right. All right. Cool. Also, it might be prescription. I don't even know yet. So let's just say we're going to find out. Guys. Blue we- Chew. If you want to goo. <laughs> if you want to goo. I like that. I'm yeah. going to put all this on my Instagram. Um, all right. So. There's things to talk about, but we also gave out a phone number for this episode. I haven't seen you in a while. Have you had any date fails? I know. I wanted. To, I know. Uh, I haven't seen you since before Christmas, right? Yeah, because you went away to Ohio. You almost said Hawaii, no, which is I nothing didn't. like Ohio. Yeah, I went to Ohio for actually. I went for a whole week, and uh, it was really, really restful. Which is not usual for visiting family. But, you know, I took all the pressure off to see anyone else. I just literally stayed at my mom's. I saw one girl that I'm friends with there. And that's Did you like guys it. get it on? Yeah, me and my mom, you mean? Or? You said one girl. Oh, one girl. You wouldn't call your mom one girl. <laughs> no, we did not. I don't get it on usually with women uh, alone. Well, I have to ask. Yeah, of course. Actually, my friend Marlia, shout out Marlia. She was Miss Ohio. She's my Ooh. best friend growing up. Is that who you went to see while you were there? Yeah. So you went out with Miss Ohio. Well, she's not Miss Ohio former now. Former Miss Ohio. Yeah. And you didn't get it on? No, I've known. She was my best friend. For, she's been my best friend since fifth grade. Those are the best people to get it on with. <laughs> yeah, this girl is real cool. She was Miss Ohio and uh, she's amazing. She's so like. Is she married with kids now since she's in Ohio? She married her high school sweetheart, but they broke up for a while. So they had like some time apart. It's actually hilarious. We were laughing about it because she was dating this guy when I was dating my high school boyfriend. And I then, thought you were uh, going to say when I was dating that guy. <laughs> yeah, we were dating at the same time. No, we. she was dating this guy. I was dating my high school boyfriend. We used to double date together. Oh. And uh, no offense to this guy or Marlia, but back then, like when they were going through the time before they broke up, I was always like, yeah, man, lose him. Like, you're going to be Miss Ohio. This guy ain't got shit. Like, this guy works at Blockbuster. Like, whatever his deal yeah, was. Yeah, and now they're closed. Uh, yeah, so that's what happened. Where'd you double date to? Did you go to the drive-in in Ohio? Dude, we went to everything. Prom. Oh, okay. Did they have a drive-in in Ohio? Yeah. They probably still do. That sounds like something they just I put on the side drive-ins. of the barn. Don't you think drive-ins are cool? They kind of got rid of them here in LA. We well, used to have like three when I was a little kid. Now really? They're all gone. Yeah. Drive-in movies? Yeah, I saw Superman 3 at the drive-in on Winnetka. Now it's just a big cineplex with like 26 theaters. That makes a lot more money when you put like 26 theaters where there used to be a drive-in. That's, that's a good point. Yeah. Although... They show movies in the parks here. I feel like they that's, do do that. That's, yeah. yeah, that's like the new driving and the cemeteries. Yeah, like there's a cemetery here that I'm banned from for going in a bikini, even though they have rock concerts and show like weird. Night of the Living Dead. And they show movies on rooftops here in L.A. They do that. Oh, now. really? Yeah, I went I to one seen of those. That. Yeah, like people's homes. No, it's like a. <laughs> 
<laughs> not a skyscraper, but like you know, like a six story building. They get the roof somehow, and they get like a bar up there. And oh, that'd be pretty cool. Yeah, it's all right. They I put like the that. seats up. They played Ghostbusters, I think, when I went. They the also girl have girl version. Like they also have here, like the girl version. <laughs> the girl version. I'm not gonna lie, though, it was pretty terrible. Don't you think? I don't remember it. It was really not <laughs> well done, in my opinion. But uh, but they also have here like cinemas that only show. Old movies, but I don't mean like second run. I mean like really old, like the new Beverly. Yeah, they That's even have fun. a silent theater here on like, uh, what's that street? Uh, somewhere near where Largo is, I think. Oh, really? Um, huh. Fairfax, maybe? I have no interest in going to see a silent film. Yeah, me either. I just think that sounds... Unless it's a couple girls getting it on. <laughs> That's the theme for today. <laughs> a silent porn. <laughs> I think all my porns are silent because I'm usually watching them like at my mom's house or in a hotel room where I don't want someone to hear. So How I'm many turn- porns did you watch in Ohio? I don't know. A lot. Really? I watch a lot of porn sometimes. Oh, sometimes. I didn't know this about you. Sometimes. But what's, then, your, what's your top two go-to categories? Right now, I'm out of porn. Well, <laughs> you obviously weren't out in Ohio. What were you looking up in Ohio? Tell um, us what you watch. I watch? Oh, God. It's so embarrassing. Why am I embarrassed to talk about this? Yeah, this is the last thing you should be embarrassed about. I know. Isn't it weird? Yeah. <laughs> Shut up, Brian. Because it's last. real. I watch interracial a lot. Interracial. Well, here's what's funny. I watch black what, girls, white guys. I get it. Uh, yeah, right. Yeah, <laughs> I watch a lot of whatever has been happening in my life. So if it's like if my current situation is like a musician, then I'm into watching like tatted up, emo looking white dudes or whatever. Or Sounds if it's like, like Kate's been banging black dudes. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I haven't been banging anyone. And that's what's funny. I've had sex since last time I saw you. Right. Uh, I've had sex one time. In Ohio? No, here in LA. It was since you've been back? Between Christmas and New Year. So that's since you've been back? Yeah. Oh, cool. But it was just uh, a guy that I've been hooking up with for... The podcast people know about this guy because oh, it's, it's been like, like a seven-year year years. Yeah. thing. Yeah, I think I yeah. know who you mean. Yeah. Um, but we'll talk about it. But yeah, so that... And then I've been... It's weird. I don't know if it's because I'm busy or I just haven't been like really trying to date. But suddenly I've had just January 1st. I'm not kidding. You tell me what this is. If it's a guy thing. All right. January 1st, literally on the day, suddenly like seven, eight guys who are all guys that have been kind of circling my wagon, so to speak, for like sending an occasional text over the course of the last year or two. They're like above you like, wah! Yeah. Wah! Just watching Kate sunbath in her her bikini, waiting for the right time to pounce. Yeah, like I was a carcass and they were vultures, but they were just like waiting for me to be like rotting out. And then suddenly... She's weak. She's been in Ohio with no (laughs) dick for two weeks. Yeah, I don't know what's going on, but suddenly... Well, it's not that any of them have taken me out because they're all over the place, but they all suddenly just started really messaging, mm. messaging, messaging. To When's your birthday? December 12th. Hmm. Somebody told me once, one of these astrology people, that when it's around your half birthday, uh huh, the opposite sex really starts to hit you up a lot. Really? And, I know it sounds weird, right? But this is near your birthday. Yeah. So it's not, that's not what this is. And not only near my, and not only hit me up like messaging, but I'm talking like, Quality messaging, not just asking for photos or sending anything rude. And like also like a couple of them invited to fly me places like overseas or like. I think all this dating is like (laughs) fucked your standards up. This was quality texting. They weren't asking for my vagina. (laughs) I think you're right. Anyways, I don't know what's going on, but that's that's it. I've been just talking to people. Okay, so what was the other uh, besides the interracial? You said you were gonna tell me two two. Oh, interracial. Uh, categories. I like gangbang. Gangbang. I like. You ever been in one? A lot of stuff, man. Oh, look at that! No answer right off the cuff. If it was I, uh, no, she'd be like, no, I have no, not. No, I haven't. But she just went. I haven't, but I'm. Not, but see, here's the thing. There's definitely things on my bucket list that at some point I wouldn't be shocked if I tried once, and that might be on it. What about a three-way with two dudes? You try that? I haven't, but I will. Would that be considered a gangbang, or you have to have at least three? I don't think that's a gangbang, do you? So that's a threesome. I think a gang is a gang. What? <laughs> How many does a gang a need gang to be? Five? A gang has to be like four, I think. I think if four you get dudes. three, I think you're good. <laughs> I'm not saying I want to do it. You did, I actually. To, I, I, <laughs> I'm not. I said it's on my bucket list, Maybe. I hate when I put things on my bucket list that I don't want to do. Don't you guys? 
<laughs> I guess what I mean is she's got like eight things on there. One of them's gangbang. I don't really want to do it. It's just on my bucket list. Here's the thing. I think probably every girl has some fantasy about it. Just like every guy probably has a fantasy about like a threesome or right, three right. chicks at once. But then I think the reality of it, maybe depending on the circumstance, you wouldn't go through with it. Okay, that's the, the, here's the difference between guys and girls. <laughs> You say I wouldn't go through with it. Guys say I couldn't even make it happen. Like, that's the difference between <laughs> us. You think? Oh, you can have a gangbang tomorrow with your fans if you wanted oh, to. Oh, yeah, of course. Yeah, yeah. so... But if I wanted a gangbang, a reverse gangbang... <laughs> you could have it happen with the right money. Well, yeah, that's the difference. Yeah. Yeah. You're right. Yeah. But the quality of the gangbang, depending on the girl... I mean, even different. the hottest guy in the world isn't going to be able to find a, a bunch of ch- They Are could. You crazy? Don't get me wrong. They could. Like, Leonardo DiCaprio could. I see what you're saying. But this is, I would have to go out hunting for chicks for weeks to make this happen. You could snap <laughs> your fingers and have it happen. Hunting for chicks. Oh, it was like. That sounds so, like, so, like, disturbing. Finding <laughs> five girls that aren't looking for a relationship, that like being around other naked chicks, that want to be in this situation. You know with where it would to take look, forever. No, you just go on, like, FetLife. There's <laughs> websites for fetish people, and that would be one. Yeah. Or you go to a party, like a swingers party. I don't know. I'm just saying you could make it happen. Yeah, if you it's want easier to. for girls to get yes. into those things too. Well, yeah, a girl could just yell it out in a bar. Yeah, I mean you're right. You're right. right. But also, I've had guys say to me like, "I like the idea of a threesome, but I don't know if I could really. If I had two hot chicks in front of me, I don't know if I could. I think it intimidates some guys." Mm-mm. <laughs> <laughs> well, you've obviously had them. Yeah, I've done them. Have I you just had don't... a gangbang? No, never been in a gangbang. Is it called a gangbang when it's like five chicks on one dude? Or is that just called a good time? I think it's called a reverse time? gangbang. Is it? Yeah. Okay, is that yeah. a category of porn? Reverse I think if gangbang? you type reverse gangbang, huh. it'll come up. I haven't looked that up. Yeah. But in my gangbang fantasy, here's what's interesting. There's never any DPing. It's all just like like taking turns. Okay, so there's never... What about one in the butt, one in the vagina? Is that DPing? No, that's DPing. I'm thinking DVDA. That's the... What's that? South Park, the guys that make South Park. DVDA. South Park made this band <laughs> and they called it DVDA. And I always wondered what it meant. It means double vaginal, double anal. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> Ew. No, I don't want that. Somebody's at done all. it. Yeah. Oh, yeah, I'm sure. DVDA. But no, I have no interest in that happening. Yeah. Also, I think it's weird when the guy's dicks touch. If the guy's dicks touch at all in the porn, I'm out the game. Yeah. I don't want to watch that. I think a lot of girls are into that sort of thing. If you say so. Look, I don't want to touch dicks. I'm just saying like. I think in I think Europe it's girls, more accepted. I think girls like that shit. I don't think so. All right. Well, maybe guys we'll get. Guys dicks touching? Yeah. I think girls like bisexual guys sometimes. Maybe some girls yeah. want to. See, this is why we need. One of these days we should do this as a live stream because then people could actually call and comment. We should get like a hooker. Don't do anything with her. Just let her sit in the chair and we'll ask her questions. I have, I know so many hookers. Well, I don't what? call them hookers. Well, escorts, because I know so many porn people and lots of them escort. Oh, okay. Well, maybe we should interview some of them. Maybe I, that'd be perfect. I'd be happy to bring yeah. them here. I know so many. Okay. We'll set that up. Cool. Uh, all right. So you're saying, what about you? How is, before we get to the questions, has anyone called? Um, no calls, but we have three texts. All right. Well, how was your holiday before we get to that? It was good. It was pretty low key. I did stuff with the family mostly. All right. Yeah. Nothing. You're Jewish. I'm Jewish, can but I we ask, still do stuff. Can I ask questions about... <laughs> we still do... Yeah, I know you do stuff. Like, on Christmas. Oh, you do? Yeah, that's what I mean. Chris, do you have a Christmas tree? Not you, but your family? I've never had a Christmas tree, but I, I, for one, I love Christmas. Like, I like when the lights are up. I like the music on Coast 103.5. I, <laughs> I listen to it. Like, I'm not the yeah. typical Jew. I don't Maybe know. it's because I'm Jewish that I like that stuff. I don't like, know. I can't have it, so I'm going to experience as much as I can. No, I know lots of people that celebrate Christmas that also like Christmas, yeah, but... Yeah. I also don't know any Jews who don't love Christmas. Oh, so maybe that's a theme. Everybody loves Christmas trees. And Whenever I hear people, when Pearson, Christmas music comes on the radio, people are like, fuck. But like, you know, you know people like that, right? Well, I sometimes Christmas music can be depressing. Why? Well, at least I don't know if There's everyone, so many hits. I, I think Christmas has more hits than Michael Jackson. <laughs> like there are so many fucking hits. You're right. Hits. There are a lot of Christmas hits, but a lot of them are, you know, the good Christmas, the upbeat Christmas songs, like that Mariah Carey one, All I Want for Christmas, yeah. and that U2 one, like Baby Please Come Home. Like, These are all like, you know. Upbeat. 
that they're also ones that were made after 1960, where most of them were made before. I feel like. I guess so. Yeah, you're right. The classic. What about like the, the rapey standard. one? What my, mommy kissing Santa Claus? <laughs> no. Oh, I heard a way rapier one than that. No, the one it's cold outside. Oh, baby, it's cold outside. Yeah. That is a just very rapey song. Just one more drink. To yeah. Maybe it's. Cold I just heard even a rapier. Well, it's not rapier, but I heard one I never heard before called "Santa Claus Got Stuck in My Chimney," and you got to look up the lyrics because the lyrics are like. Santa Claus got stuck in my chimney again, just like he did when he came last year. <laughs> so he's all. It just sounds so dirty. Christmas is over. Christmas is done. Yeah. Uh, all right. Well, I I'm curious about one thing. Oh. Because uh, I don't know much about Hanukkah. Okay. But I, I was wondering it this year. I know there's eight nights. Everything I know about Hanukkah is because of Adam Sandler. Eight crazy nights. Yeah, that's what I. <laughs> Adam Sandler and the dreidel song. Like that's what Christians know about. I'm going to be honest with you. I'm like, as they say, Jew-ish. Like, I don't know that much. So you don't... But here's my question. Is there one night... So at the beginning of Hanukkah or the end of Hanukkah, is there one night that's like the big night that you do the family dinner and it's special or more special? I think it's the first night. Like you, you light the menorah for the first time of the season because you have to do it eight nights, you know. And What happens on the last night? On the last night, you just have... You get... All the candles are full. That's it. Yeah. That's it. I'm pretty sure. There's got to be more. No, I don't <laughs> think. I don't think one it. of the nights is more significant than the other. So when you light the last candle, there's no celebration, or there's no like, what does it mean? In my house, growing up, it was just eight <laughs> nights, and they were all equal. <laughs> if you took a piece of pie and cut it into eight <laughs> slices, they're all equal size. That's so politically correct. Yeah. <laughs> so, but the last night must mean something. Doesn't it have something to do with like the the Eight nights of something, Passover. It's not Passover. That's a different time That's of year, right? That's a different right? time of year. There's got to be eight. Why is it eight nights long? Do you even know? Um, I think. Oh God, I'm gonna <laughs> butcher this. I feel like they had oil, and the oil only lasted for eight nights. Who are they? The Jews. Where were they? What were they doing? In the desert, <laughs> and <laughs> in the desert with oil. I'm pretty. This is so bad. This is so bad. This is so bad. Can we call up a Jew? Yeah, if you want, I'll try to <laughs> call somebody. Who do you somebody. know that's Jewish that could explain this better? My cousin Jamie. She's uh, married an Orthodox Jew. I should have texted. I should have. I should have given Adam a heads up. We could have called him. Hold Here, on. Let's see if she answers. <laughs> yeah, please call someone because this. Hey, that sounds great in my headphones. Yeah, we'll see on. how that works out. <laughs> I'm looking up what is Hanukkah while we make this call. Well, she'll know. Hello. Hey, what's up? What's up? Hey, so I have a question for you. I'm here with Kate yes. Quigley. We're doing her podcast, and she started asking me questions about Hanukkah. <laughs> and I okay. really don't know shit. Like, let me. I'm going to tell you what I told her, and you tell me if I'm way off. Okay? Let me tell her the question first that I asked you. I just asked him, is there one night of the eight nights of Hanukkah that That's stands out more special. And I also asked him why, what is the significance of lighting one candle a night for eight nights? Like, why does it take place? And his answer was something about, I'll tell her what my okay, answer you're was. Going- <laughs> my answer was, my answer was that the first question, um, was what was the first question? The first question was, does one night have more? No, significance? my answer was no, they're all the same. If we had eight pieces of pie, they'd all be the same size. I know we have dinner usually the first night just to celebrate the first night, but I think they're all the same, you know, potency there. Potency. That's correct. Thank you. I got they, one out of two. Equal potency. Yes. Okay. okay. And then the second question, I know I'm wrong with this, but I, this is what I told her. I said, I think they were in the desert and they had enough oil for eight nights and it lasted eight nights and they thought it would only last one or something like that. Yeah, that's basically it. They oh. had enough oil for one night and it lasted for eight. In the desert. I mean, yeah, the Maccabee somewhere in the desert. <laughs> so Brian's somewhere dancing. Around. He's yeah. like doing a happy dance. <laughs> so they were going somewhere with oil. Were they like moving somewhere or were they just? In no, like- I think they were like in like the, the temple and they, there was, a, I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> My husband's not home. He'd be the one. With the there you go. <laughs> this is so great that we have now two Jews who have like a Pretty good guess. <laughs> She's much better than me, though. Trust me on that. I just wonder. I can how... confirm that's the story. Yeah. I just don't know. I don't know where in the desert. Yeah. This is okay, but th- yeah, you're actually you're pretty you're pretty spot on. I just googled it. <laughs> <laughs> I thought I butchered it. I was like, oh shit, maybe they had like eight 
kids and I was like, fuck, why am I talking about oil? Like, it's been so long (laughs) since I knew this. Here's what it says. Eight candles symbolize the number of days that the temple lantern blazed. Mm -hmm. Yeah, see, I got the temple Temple part. Yeah, that was good. The ninth, the shamash, is a helper candle used to light the others. Families light one candle on the first day, two on the second. Three on the third, four on the fourth. Yeah, it just keeps going. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's why the last night they're all full. You replace all the candles. I see. All right, all right. This was good. Interesting. And you get gifts every night. And are the gifts the same level also? Yeah. We usually do the big gift on the last night. Well, that's the thing that they're doing. It's not a special night, though. I don't want to ruin my I see. potency. So theory. every, every other yeah. night, it's kind of like one gift out of the stocking. And the last night, it's like the big PlayStation or whatever. When I was sort little, of. we got fucking yeah. dreidels and gold fucking <laughs> chocolate coins. Well, all right. That really helped clarify. Thank all you. All right. Thanks, Jerry No problem. All right. You know, I bet Bye. there's a lot of Bye. people like me that have been wondering that their whole life. I figured out why the call sounded good. All right. It's that burner line. This was a regular call. Oh, you think so? That's what it is. Oh. Yeah, okay. Oh, so, so if we ever get calls, let them give us their number just, and we'll call we'll them. We'll call them. Yeah. All right. Right on. All right. So now we're going to get to some uh, Q&A. Yeah, we I'm, got... I'm like, assuming you have no good date fails since you've been, you know... Uh, Dating the same chick. Yeah. <laughs> Haven't had any date fails lately. You guys are good. I don't think I had any fails either. Although that's not true. That guy that I sleep with once a year, that I've been sleeping with once a year for like seven years, whatever, literally, I swear, every time we have sex, the next day this guy finds a reason to pick a fight. I've, at this point, like, I can just have sex with him and go right back to being pals the next day because, like, we've been doing it for so long, but he always will find some reason to pick a fight. What did he do? How did he pick a fight? So we hooked up and then uh, we made plans to hang out New Year's Eve. I said, I want to spend New Year's Eve totally sober. I want to just, I said, let's just like have sober sex all night and then work out in the morning because you're supposed to do on New Year's Eve, whatever it is that you want to be doing all year. So I want to be having, I want to be sober more this year. I want to have good sex. (laughs) I want to be sober. (laughs) More this year? I'm not going to be totally sober, but like party, drink only when it's like there's a reason to celebrate. Not like every night. Sounds like you got a strict game plan. Go ahead. Thank you. Uh, And then, you know, work out a lot and be productive. Like I was already going to be working on New Year's Eve. So work and then work out. So anyway, so we pick a fight. We planned on it. The next day, I knew he'd do it. We made plans, which we never should have done. The next day, he texted me and said, I don't know about New Year's Eve because I pulled my groin. And I was like, first of all, this was like four days before New Year's Eve. Also, I'm like, you did not pull your groin. I know athletes with pulled groins. You don't pull a groin having sex and not feel it till the next day. Yeah. If you pull a groin, you're going to feel it like right away. I've banged a few times and I've not pulled my groin once out of any of them. Dude, I mean, he did not pull a groin. Did he say it was from the sex? Maybe he pulled a groin walking down the stairs. I said how. And then he was like, how do you think? Like insinuating it was the sex. And I go, well, it wasn't us. We would have known. I would have known. Then he sent me a photo of a bruise. Like that proves anything. Was it really bad though? It was a bad bruise, but it looked like a hickey and it was so close up you couldn't tell where it was. And then I was like, that looks like a hickey and it's not for me. So if you got bruised already, congratulations. Yeah, he might just went to Google Photos and typed groin bruise. Yeah, but then he got all defensive and then he sent me a video and he's like, does this look like a hickey dumbass? And he pulled the camera away and it was a bruise, but it was like on the side of like his rib cage. So then I go, that looks like internal bleeding. Like, <laughs> like you have a huge, and I go, that's not from sex. Like you banged into something. And also the groin is not anywhere near your rib cage. Yeah. The whole story was bullshit. And then I said to him, and a bruise is internal bleeding, by the way, not always. Well, what do you think? It well, is? yeah, but I mean, this looks severe. Okay. So anyway, then I said to him, I go, Hey, listen, I go, me and you, we're cool. It's no big deal if you don't want to hang on New Year's Eve. Like, we can just do other things. Like, just tell me now and I'll just make plans. You don't have to, like, make up this story. Right. That's when he lost his shit. He got so mad. He's like, you never believe me. You always think I'm lying. Fuck you. Blah, 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 blah. I'm blocking your number. And he blocked my number. But I don't even care. Usually I care. This time I was like, whatever. And I just made other plans. And I had the most fun New Year's Eve. I spent it with my gay bestie and we watched scary movies. That's cool. <laughs> Yeah, 
But that's it. But watch, this guy does this every time we fuck. And then like six months from now, I'll run into him somewhere and we'll get drunk and we'll have sex and it'll just start over. What? Who's your gay bestie, that uh, Asian? Aiden. Yeah. yeah Asian. Asian the Aiden? Asian. Aiden the Asian? <laughs> Asian Aiden. Yeah. yeah. So anyway, that's that. And I'm bringing Aiden to Phoenix with me this uh, Thursday through, not this Thursday, sorry, next Thursday through Saturday, Sunday, House of Comedy. House of Comedy. What state? Arizona, Phoenix. Phoenix, Arizona. Yeah. Good my nose know. is so stuffy. Here's okay. a tissue. I'll, I don't want to blow my nose on camera. Well, I'll edit it towards me when you do that. <laughs> Just read the question. All right. Question number one. Here we go. Is being eaten out on your period taboo? Is it good for the woman at all? Is it worth it for the guy? From Mike in Texas. What a great question. Yeah. What do you think? I'm curious your opinion. Well, I'll tell you one thing. I've done it a number of times. And it's, I don't mind doing it, but usually they do. So it's got to be like, you have to start getting them all worked up by making out and shit and then just work your way down there. And then you finally get to the point where you could yank the tampon out and have sex. Oh, good that you know that. Some guys do not know you can do that. Proud of you. Yeah, you got to just. You just got to rip it out. Pulling out tampons. Yes, right by the strings. (laughs) Okay, bro. These are a few of my favorite things. Can we please make a music video of that bit for you? I will be what's her face in the sound of music and I'll run through the hills. Yeah. Okay, perfect. Whoops, someone's calling. It doesn't matter. Okay, so uh, my thoughts on this are one, it's fine if the girl wants you to. For me, I wouldn't let a guy do that until I'm at the point where like I don't think there's going to be any point. It'd have to be toward the end. I don't want a guy to do that right at the beginning. That said, one time a guy did go down on me during that time and he would not let me stop him. And it's a guy I know hates blood. So I actually thought that means he's in love. I think if a guy goes down on you during your period, there's a good chance he's in love with you. Holding hands and going down on the period. Those are the two things that constitute love in Kate's world. In my mind, yeah. Um, But that is when a woman is horniest. Yeah, I've heard that. It's true. So I think that it's a great idea. Did if, you have a tampon in? Uh, well, when he, yeah, when he started. So there wouldn't be any blood while he's no, starting. But, but I mean, like just the fact that he was even, he, this is a guy that never even, like if I even have the slightest like smell of blood anywhere near there, he doesn't want to be anywhere near there. Like he hates the smell of blood. Then why did he have Because he's different... in love. Oh. Is was. he? Was. Oh. This is like three years ago. Um, anyway, that's yeah. my advice on that. I say it's fine if you read the girls' cues. I, I mean, a girl will let you know. Some what's girls. The, what's the worst period situation you've ever had? Like, uh, not like by yourself, like sex. Oh, with a guy? Yeah. Uh, I'll tell you mine. You know, I've been really lucky that I've never bled <coughs> a whole lot at a guy's place. Although one time in a hotel room, it looked like a murder scene. Yeah, that happened to me once. Yeah, that's the word. What's really... She was on top and it was just like... Like it looked like Freddy Krueger came out of the bed and went like... To me. Did she know? She knew. We knew. Like she warned me. But I think she had like a... As you ladies would say, a very heavy flow. (laughs) Well, a lot of girls have a heavy flow at the beginning. So if it's the first day, I just say... I don't like, I don't want to have all that blood everywhere. I don't either. Day one, I don't want to do it. But if it's like day three or four and it's just, if I know it's just going to be like a teeny bit, here's my question. Sometimes if I think it's pretty much over, I won't tell the guy. Mm. And then if he notices, if he goes, I think you might be on your period, I'll go, oh, really? Weird. Maybe it's just starting. So he's going down there and just slurping away? No, I'm talking about sex. Oh. Not going down. Yeah, gotcha. Like, if you know it's just about over, the, the guy is not going to find any blood with his mouth. I'm talking, like, if your dick is big enough to, like, draw out the rest. <laughs> this is the dirtiest episode. It's like one of those dipsticks where you check your oil. <laughs> yeah. Uh, what do you, I mean, what's Okay, yours? you still got about a quarter tank, it looks like. Yeah, there's been times that I'm not sure if I started my period when a guy's having sex yeah, with me. Yeah, sometimes a sex could start it, I think. That like. happens. Yeah. Yeah, it also can make you have a baby. 
I mean, in the moment, it can, sex can, uh, if you're pregnant, it can, what do you call it, induce labor. Did you induce know that? Induce labor. So that's if you're nine months pregnant and you have sex. Yeah. Like if you want to get the baby what does out. What with periods? I don't know. I was just talking about what sex can do. Okay. <laughs> what else can sex do? I think it can get you pregnant too. I know it can get you pregnant and I know that it can make a guy leave forever. Yeah. Yeah. Those are the three things. I you have can a- make a baby come out. You can make a baby form, and you can make a big guy leave. Yeah, that's pretty much it. Yeah. That's it. Uh, all right. Well, next question. That okay. was a good one. Yeah. I wonder if anyone sent me questions. Probably not. Well, wait. Is it good for the woman at all? Is it worth it for the guy? Those are the last two questions. And is it taboo? So oh. I guess it's it's not taboo depending on who you're dealing with. I think it is taboo. Well, a lot of stuff's taboo to some people. Well, yeah. I mean, is it taboo like a gangbang? No, but I do think that... I think blowjobs are like illegal in fucking Arkansas or some shit. Is that true? I, I know... think blowjobs might be illegal in a state or two. <laughs> well, yeah, because blowjobs and anal are both called uh, uh, sodomy, aren't they? I don't think blowjobs are. <laughs> <laughs> I think blowjobs are part of the sodomy package. <laughs> I'm pretty sure, <laughs> sure it's not. No, in the, like biblically... I don't know. I've been watching right, Messiah on sodomy. Netflix. I'll let you know when I get to that chapter. I'm pretty sure it's just dude. This show Messiah stuff. on Netflix. Not to give like a free plug. I'm addicted to the show. It's so good. What's it called? Messiah. Oh yeah, you told me about that earlier. I can't stop watching it. I'm like binging it. I can't. I was gonna wash my hair and I like couldn't turn it off. Oh, it actually can be oral sex. I knew it. I read it. I thought it could only be. Maybe it's sometimes most people think of it as butt sex. I always thought that or it was I'm just, just totally stupid. No, no, no. You're not stupid. I I thought it was anal. I thought sodomy meant anal. And then I actually read about some state. I was reading about like states with the wildest sex laws just because all the abortion stuff going on. And so one of the things that I was reading is states that it's still illegal to have uh, give blowjobs. And they consider that sodomy, which is weird. But yeah. Or activity between a person and a non-human animal. What? That's not, that's bestiality. I know, but that's what it says here. Oh, wait, here. non-human, oh, huh. That's... Sodomy or boogery is generally anal or oral sex between people or sexual activity between a person and a non-human animal. Do but you... this is the internet. One article is going to say something different than another one. <laughs> Do you think that it should be illegal to have sex with an animal? Yeah. I do too, but you I wonder. You can't get consent from an animal. That's true, but what if they like it? I'm You'll never know it. for a fact that an animal is liking the what, sex. What if it comes up to you like wanting more? Look, are we talking about like a I'm, male animal banging you or me banging a female animal? Either way. Because if a male animal is banging you, I, I am convinced he's liking it. But if I'm banging an animal, I'm not so sure she's into it. Okay, yeah, well, you are sick. I'm not saying it should be legal. I'm not asking you if there are cases where animals have wanted it. <laughs> I'm just saying maybe there are male animals that have. Has a dog ever humped your lug? <laughs> yeah, your but, leg? yes, <laughs> your yes, lug. of course. But that's different. He wanted it. <laughs> You're right. taking him into the room. <laughs> we have. Yeah, we might not have to. We, I don't want to have sex with a dog. Okay, okay. <laughs> <laughs> It's the worst episode ever. All right. All right. Uh, go on. Huge fan of both of you. Thank you. Instead of a date <laughs> fail story, how about a date win? Tell us about a memorable slash special date that you'll never forget. <laughs> I mean, you got one? <laughs> um, hmm. That's hard. That is hard. A date you'll never... For- well, it's hard to answer that because it's like if if the whole experience... I mean, I guess if it's just one date we're talking about, I can think of lots. Yeah. I guess. I went on a date. I got a... Uh, I don't want to name this person, but I could. But a guy took me to a really great... A guy took me on a really great date. I guess it was just a first date. We haven't had a second date. But a guy took me... It sounds me- like it could be a song. This guy took me on a great <laughs> really date. Great first it date. wasn't a first date. We haven't date. had a second date. Yeah. That's a wrap. Uh... A guy took me to a uh, listening party for a... Uh, actually, I've been on lots of great dates, now I'm thinking about it. But this one, a guy took me to a, a album release party or pre-album release or whatever for a music group that I like. I won't say who, but he took me and... the thing, Why does it matter if we know the music group that Because you like? I don't want to give away who the person is because I might have talked about it. It doesn't matter. Point is, the guy took me to this party and the reason that I liked the date so much is because the guy... Um, he just, he, 
held my hand at the party. He introduced me to everybody. It was, it's funny for me that this seems like such a low standard, but I've just dated so many people that if they are in any way, shape, or form in the public eye, or even if they're not, they want to be so secret about it. Yeah. And I, I do understand that to some degree. I'm similar, but at the same time, it is refreshing when someone's like proud to show you off. Yeah. From jump. Because as a woman, you're like, oh, this person's proud of me. They respect what I do. He was like telling everyone how funny I am and stuff. How and come then, you're not still dating? Because this person, like, we just, we went out once and then we kept trying to go out again, but we both travel so much. We both have jobs that are like full-time it travel. Difficult. So it's been really hard to go out again. I mean, I could tell you about a good date I had recently, but it was, uh, it's like when I tell a date, it's like the guy usually makes these things happen. You know what I mean? Well, yeah. So it's like, I'm not going to tell you like some girl picked me up in a carriage. Like I'm going to tell you yeah, something I did. But you could have taken out some girl on a great date and she turned out to be a nightmare. So there's yeah. something to be said about this. So um, we went out and uh, I said, we're going to check out this venue that I might be running a show at. But secretly, I had Avril Lavigne tickets. Oh, that's awesome. Yeah. So she's like, where is this place? Like a Marina Del Rey. And then we were going to the Greek. And then I told the guy in the Uber, I told him what was happening. So he was like, oh, we got to go the wrong this way because there's major traffic on the 405. Oh, smart. So, so you then totally she's like, faked it we're, out. We're, we're getting real close to the Greek theater. Yeah. And she like shows me her phone and she's like showing me the navigation. She's like, it's going to be like 54 minutes before we get to Marina Del Rey. Yeah, because the Greek theater, like, oh, okay. for, for yeah. people that don't live here, the Greek theater is like in Hollywood and Marina Del Rey is like way over at the beach. They're nowhere near each other. So I had to basically tell her at that point, but we were pulling up almost. I go, okay, this is what's really happening. I gave her the tickets. And no they were way. like fourth row tickets. They were really good. That's a really good. Now, is there anything that a girl has ever done on a date with you? Even if it's like something really small that made the date go from okay to amazing like wow this girl's the shit or this is so awesome or yeah surprise. one time this girl says you're gonna get it tonight just kidding um <laughs> and she said that's it all like, the guy cares about <laughs> you're such a dick but you're not but that's hilarious um not really girls really? don't usually they're not that proactive like you know you'll get a nice gift on your birthday maybe or your or christmas but like they're not like I'm going to surprise him. Like, that doesn't usually happen. You know what's really sad is that so many times when I've been really sweet to guys, uh, they, like, I am actually almost afraid to be too nice to guys now or do anything too sweet because it seems to me, and I hate to say this, that all the girls I know who treat their women like trash, like the guys are just obsessed with them. And every girl I know who's really good to a guy, he treats them like shit. Mm. It almost makes me feel afraid to be really good to a guy. Yeah. How weird is that? Yeah. There's something to it though. Like, like, I don't know. I almost don't want to do anything. You know, I read this book, Why Men Love Bitches. And like one of the things it says is like, never ask the guy how he's doing. Never ask him how his day is. Never ask him anything about himself. Just be completely into what you're doing, your life, yourself. Let him do all the work. And, and I used to be like, that is so selfish. But the more I do that to men, the more they like, really do hang around forever it's really bizarre i feel like that'd be hard for you because i mean it is hard yeah you, you seem like you're too like much of a real person to be honest like it's hard yeah like you're kind of hollywood but you're not like hollywood like you're not kate quigley you're kate quigley in hollywood you know what i mean i know i don't i know some yeah. girls that are hollywood and they become hollywood i don't think i'm really hollywood you're pretty I, hollywood i think i was hollywood for like a year at do you think I am? I, no, I think that, I'm, I was. I'm giving you a compliment oh, by thanks. saying you still remain to be yourself, even oh, though you're so into all the like oh, stuff that like you're, you know, you're. I could be a lot more Hollywood. Oh, well, you act. I think I know. What you, you don't mean. act Hollywood. That's the thing. Thank you. That's what I'm trying to say. Thanks. But you're still enveloped in that world. Oh, I see what you mean. Yeah, yeah that's yeah. what I'm trying to say. Thanks. Yeah. yeah. You know, it's weird. It wore off on me. Like, for instance, when I the first couple of years that I probably could have tried to go to like Golden Globe parties and shit like that. I always would hit up my manager and agents be like, can you get me into this? Can you get me on this yeah. red carpet? And like for two years, that seemed really fun until I realized it's just, it's just literally going to parties with people that just all they want to do is talk about themselves. Those are Hollywood people. But here's the thing. 
you can still ask for those things and you're still not Hollywood. You'd want to be there, but you're still going to be yourself once you're there. That's my oh, point. Oh, I see what you're saying. Yeah, that's yeah. that's true. That's true. But now I don't even want to go to those things. Yeah. I find that like, I don't know. I was just talking to Joey Diaz about it, which like obviously Joey's way more well known than I am or than you are. But like he. Uh, well, at least you. Yeah, you're right. You're actually probably more known than both of us. No, but but he and I were just talking about how the more people know you, the less people you want to know. And it's weird, but it feels that way to me lately. Like, I feel almost shy. Like, when I go to parties, I just sit in the corner. I talk to, like, my little group of friends. Like, like you see at the comedy store now, it's like, if I'm not talking to you or George or Red Band or, like, a few people that I really want to hang with there, otherwise I just leave. Yeah, the Hollywood at the Hollywood at the holiday party, I was like, "Where is she?" I'm like, "Oh, there she is in the corner." Did I even go? Oh yeah, I did go, but I didn't did go. Did I long. even go? Yeah, I don't remember. Oh, I skipped. I skipped the Laugh Factory one because it was just there's too many holiday parties. How many holiday parties did you go to this year? It's like a couple. I felt like Most every night you shit. had to go to an industry party here. It's just bleh, I can't take it off. I only um, I only took one photo at the comedy store Christmas party, and it was with you. Yeah, I remember that. And you're not even a Christian; you're a Jew. Yeah. <laughs> It's a holiday party, not a Christmas party. Oh, sorry. <laughs> <clears throat> All right, we'll do a couple more questions. I feel like this podcast has been way over an hour. Am I wrong? I don't know. And um, we only have one question. Actually, there's two questions, and they're both for you. Oh, right. But we can both answer it. Yeah, it's we'll generic... both answer it. I might have some in here, too. Go ahead. Kate, yes. what made you want to get into comedy? Do you remember your first time on stage doing stand-up? Uh, what made me uh, want to get <clears throat> into comedy? Well, I always... I always did comedy stuff. I just didn't do stand up, but I grew like growing up. I always did plays, and I always, I used to write sketches when I was like eight, nine years old, and make kids act and stuff. So I just always, my family. I think anybody who goes through trauma uh, finds a way to cope, and a lot of people use comedy. So like my parents would fight, and when they were fighting, I would take my brother and sister in the other room, try to make them laugh and stuff. But my first set, well, my first stand up set was really technically and i forgot all about this till the other day in high school once was a talent show or something i was a theater my my high school had vocational departments and i went to like a i went to like a theater high school it was like an outsourced program that i went to and you had to do we had to do stand up once all of us and i was terrified and i was terrible like i mean i remember, do you remember any of your jokes not one but i remember having no idea how to write a joke completely bombing and I was funny but I was just funny back then because I was a brat funny like Zach Morris funny Do you like, have it on just, video no thank god Damn. but my second time was in LA I took a class Acme a stand-up class and at the end of the class it was like a performance in the belly room at the comedy store so that was the second time Do you have that on tape somewhere yeah Ooh. that I watched not super long ago and you know what's funny it wasn't like god awful for a first time like when I went back and watched it like, mine was god awful was it really oh god oh, I've had way worse bombs since then I remember my jokes shut up oh yeah what's a joke you remember from your first set I can tell you the first thing I ever said on stage tell it and I have to set it up a little bit go ahead Godzilla was coming out okay with Matthew Broderick all right and the advertisers had put all over the buses, like, his tail is longer than this bus. Like, that was the advertisement. <laughs> there was a billboard. His claws are longer than this billboard. All over town in, in Hollywood. Okay. So I was trying to do stand-up. I went and watched a bunch of open mics. I couldn't get the guts to do it. I finally said, I'm going to do it. I was terrified also. By the way, Godzilla's long gone now. Oh, okay. Yeah. Nobody remembers Godzilla advertising. <laughs> but you're joking. But I get on stage... <laughs> I get on stage at the Laugh Factory for my three minutes. This is the first place I first ever did. time you went up was on the yep. Laugh Factory yep. open mic. Yep. That was not smart. Yep. <laughs> no Check, it, it, it didn't matter where I did this though. Trust no, me. I know. I get on stage and I go, you know, his dick is longer than this stage. <laughs> and they had no idea who you were talking about. They didn't know what I was talking about. Who were you talking about? Godzilla's you, dick. You just said his dick is long. I thought everyone was. In, I thought everyone noticed these ads and they just thought of it like I thought of it. Oh, that's real funny. Yeah, and then I just talked. And there goes the dog. And then that's I right. just talked about. Um, Can't even hear it. About how I have to read when I shit, and that was pretty much my whole act back then. I'm not gonna lie. I had a couple jokes in my original set that I did for so long, and I could still pull back out and do. I was just thinking. I have some terrible ones too, but there's one I used to do all the time about. Uh, because I used to talk about, I was married when I started stand-up. So I would talk about how um, I never cheated when I was married, but that I would take 
acting classes where I would bring in scenes where I just had to make out with people. Yeah. So I would find a way to cheat. And I and I said, you know, one thing they don't have in L.A. is porn acting class. That's what I want to take. What would that even be like? You'd be like, they'd be like, the teacher would be like, Dirk, Crystal, do the scene again. But this time, ask her and really mean it. Who is your daddy? Was he there for you? Like, whatever. Day one, we're going to pick your porn name. <laughs> yeah. But I used to do a whole a whole version of porn acting class. I forgot all about that. That's pretty funny. It's actually funny. You could bring that Maybe back bring and it work back. it up. Yeah. Yeah. What's funny is when I got the AVN awards, mm -hmm. they wanted me to write the opening sketch. And one of the things I pitched was, was porn acting class. Yeah, and they're like, Everybody pitches that. I'm like, well, how come no one's ever done it? Oh, wait, story. I don't think it's funny. They didn't think it was funny, but maybe I'll bring it back. Yeah. Yeah. So there you go. All right. Good one. Is that it? Is that I all think... your questions? Yeah. Let me, uh, I might have more questions, but I could save them because we got like a, we could, we could save the other questions for the next episode. Next episode. Right. You we... want to plug anything, Brian? Plug... Your birthday's this weekend. Oh. Brian Monarch's birthday, Saturday night. Uh, is this show sold out already at the comedy store? There's like 40 tickets left. Oh, so Saturday night, I'm going to host Brian's birthday show, Comedy Store Main Room, 7 p.m. Yep. So get tickets. And Thursday at the Laugh Factory, yep. we'll both be there. The 8 o'clock show was 7.45. 7.45 show at the Laugh Factory this so, Thursday, yeah, the 9th. Yeah, get tickets to both those. And uh, I'll be in Phoenix, House of Comedy, next week. And uh, I'll find out more about Blue Chew. <laughs> so... If you want to try Blue Chew, look for the link in my Instagram bio. It'll be there. I'll let you know when. Blue Chew. Blue. It'll make you goo. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right. Follow Brian. Brian does these really cool. Tell them real quick about the things you do with the videos. Oh, I make deep fake videos. Um, really good ones. They're yeah. so funny with all these different comedians. You should make them with like all kinds of people. You should just make a huge deep fake Instagram because you're so good at it. Like use movie stars and rappers and all kinds of yeah, shit. Yeah, I tried to do one with The Rock recently. It didn't turn out as well, so. All right, well. But yeah, I'll keep, I'm, I'm always thinking of new shit. He's really good at it. If you go to brianmonarch.com, you can actually hit deep fake at the top and you can see all of them. Oh, hell yeah. Yeah. Well, there you go. And uh, I just got in a bunch more Fuckboy Patrol badges. So if you want one, I'm selling those. Hit FBP. Me up. FBP. All right, I love you guys. This has been Date Fails. This was really fun. That Thanks, was a good Brian. one. All right, bye. Bye. Do -do.